This video is going to tell you everything that you need to know about getting zoning for your ducted air conditioning system. So we're going to go over what air conditioning zoning is, what the pros are, what the cons, how it works in terms of installing a system. We're going to be going in depth into even zone dampers, spill and bypass zones, you know, the always on zones that you may have heard about, installation requirements, the costs, the limitations of zones, getting temperature sensors, and we're also going to have a section at the end where we go over the popular zone controllers, ranging from air touches, zone touches, and standard zone uh, systems that come from brands, you know, such as Mitsubishi Electric and Daikin and Panasonic, they all have their own zone controllers. So my name is Jesse, I'll only say this once, I'm the founder of gridless.com.au, and we help connect you to the best installers in Victoria and Sydney to install energy efficient air conditioning and hot water systems. So if you're after the best installers that are fully vetted, just visit gridless.com.au to inquire and we'll be happy to help you out with your inquiry. Okay, so on to the video. So if you're unaware of air conditioning zoning and why you would even get it installed, I'll give you a brief rundown. When you have multiple split systems in your home, it's very convenient because you can turn them on and off whenever you want. It also saves energy because you're not heating or cooling zones that, you don't, that don't need to be heated or cooled. Well, you can do the same with a ducted system. All you need to do is install zones. You have a zone controller and you have the zone dampeners that work inside of the duct and that control, they open and close to control the airflow that goes to the outlets. This is beneficial because it can let you heat and cool rooms that you want and not heat or cool rooms that you don't want to heat or cool. It can also help you control the temperature if you have a sophisticated zone system such as an air touch five. So now let's talk about how zoning works. So over here we have a diagram of how a zoning system works. You can see that there are zone motors and they open and close to control the airflow that goes into a room. So you can have limited airflow, you can have more airflow or you can even close off the vent entirely if you want no airflow into the room. So your installer will actually help set this up. The zone dampers are the blocks in the ductwork that help the open and close. So they actually look like this. They're basically a circle and they can open often 100% all the way down to 5% or be completely off. So there's a range that allows for different amounts of airflow and that's what they look like. Now, in more advanced systems, such as an AirTouch 5, you'll also have the option to add on individual thermostats for each zone. And these are basically temperature sensors that sense the temperature of the room. And the benefit of this is that with an air touch, you can actually control the temperature of each room. So that means if you're heating your entire home, but Franklin prefers uh, very little heat added, whereas Samantha prefers a lot of heat, uh, as hot as possible, you can actually have that. And that's pretty unique. Now, the question is, is that actually useful for, for you? I think it's a nice feature. It will cost you significantly more because you have to install these temperature sensors, uh, which requires an electrician, and they cost about 150 bucks each. So there is an added cost, and you can see how if you have eight different zones with eight different temperature sensors, it can really add up, but that's up to you. If it is something you want, it is a premium feature, and I can definitely see the argument for wanting it. I'm just providing you with the information. It's up to you to make the choice. Now, the control system is the brain of the operation. It allows you to set the temperatures for each zone. And there's a lot of differences between the different control systems that are available. Some of them have Wi-Fi. Some of them don't have anything and you can only tap on the screen. It's up to you as well if you want Wi-Fi. It's also one of those premium features. I'm not gonna say whether it's better or worse. For me personally, I don't need to control anything on my phone, but most controllers also let you set time. So make a choice from that as you want to. Now, one brief section about spill and bypass zones. So what are these and why are they required? Well, they're required because if you turn your air conditioning system on and there's no outlets that are open, it's gonna build up pressure and it's gonna destroy your ductwork and cost you a lot of money and potentially damage the system too, which is definitely not something that you want. So that's why you have bypass zones, which are always on. It's recommended that these are not put in your bedroom. Why? Because if they are put in your bedroom, then you're going to be at the mercy of an air conditioning system that's constantly super hot or super cold. So you want to make sure that the bypass zone is a living area within your house. So 
What are the pros of getting zones air conditioning? Number one, I think is energy efficiency. It's going to save you a lot in terms of energy because you're not heating and cooling zones that aren't required. Number two is related to number one, it's the cost savings. You're gonna be able to save a lot of money if you're not wasting zones when someone's not in the house and it's not at full occupancy. Number three is it's comfortable. You can set up which zones you want and which ones you don't. And if you have an advanced zone controller with temperature sensors like an AirTouch 5, then it's also more comfortable because you can set your desired temperature. So what are the cons of getting zone air conditioning? Number one is that it's going to cost you more, especially if you're after a more premium zone controller and especially if you're after temperature sensors. So you have to remember the zone controller costs more, the dampeners cost more, and the installation of temperature sensors, if you want them, also cost more. They actually sometimes require more space depending on the dampeners that you're going for. They won't be suitable in very thin cavity homes. Another con is the potential for pressure issues. So zoning should be installed and designed by an expert and if it's not, there's a greater risk of something going wrong. You need to make sure that there's not an over build up of pressure within the system because that is going to cause damage to your ducts and it's also going to cause damage to your system which is very expensive. You want to make sure that the installer installing this actually knows what they're doing and they're fully qualified. So let's break down the actual costs involved in getting a zone air conditioner. Number one, it's going to depend on the size of your home and the number of zones required. The more zones required, the more dampeners you need. Dampeners range from $100 to $200 in price and your installer might charge you more just for installing zones. Also, the controller can cost a lot of money. Generic zone controllers, meaning belonging to the brand of the system you're installing, typically cost around $500 extra. And if you're looking at something like an AirTouch, it's gonna cost you $1,000 all the way to $2,000 extra. And if you're wanting to get temperature sensors as well, it's gonna cost you even more, about $150 per temperature sensor. Now let's talk about zone controllers. Now you can have branded zone controllers or you can have third party zone controllers and I'll explain briefly when I think you should make the difference between the two. I would typically go for a branded controller in most cases for the following reason. It is gonna be cheaper. <laughs> it is really that simple. It's usually gonna be cheaper than getting a third party zone controller. You can usually get Wi-Fi too. If you want temperature sensors, you'll probably need to go through a third party and get an air touch. So now let's go through some of the different systems. So Mitsubishi Electric is a very popular system and the zone controller comes in four or eight separate zones. It has a backlit touch screen interface as you can see here, it looks pretty good. It can connect up to two additional remote temperature sensors, but these are not the same as air touch temperature sensors. To be clear, they don't let you set different temperatures for each. Uh, zone. They're really just measuring the overall temperature of the entire system. So it's, it's a little bit different to an air touch temperature sensor. You've got a programmable on and off timer and seven day scheduling so you can turn on the system exactly when you want to and it's also compatible with Wi-Fi for extra. So for a four zone you're looking at about $550 extra. For an eight zone controller, you're looking at about 700 bucks. And for a Wi-Fi adapter, you're looking at about the $250 mark. Then we have a Daikin system, it looks like this. It's basically a lot of the same features as uh, the Mitsubishi controller. You have a programmable timer, you've got four to eight zones, the price is very similar. Wi-Fi is also an optional add-on, which is similar. So Daikin and Mitsubishi, very similar zoning. Now we have the Panasonic zone controller. It's basically the same thing. You can have up to eight zones. Wi-Fi is optional and there's an optional smartphone app as well. Very similar. All of these branded controllers offer basically the same thing. Okay, now we have an AirTouch 5 and this is one of the more premium options. It's a third party option and you should really be looking at this option if you're wanting to get temperature sensors so you have control over the temperature of each room. That's the main benefit of getting an AirTouch. The controller itself is about twice as expensive as any other controller. You're looking at about $1,000. Plus you need to get a gateway that connects it. 
uh, to the system that you're getting. So if you get an AirTouch you'll also, and a Mitsubishi Electric, you'll need to get a Mitsubishi Electric Gateway. It does come with Wi-Fi already. If you need temperature sensors, you will have to add those as well. They cost about $150 each, plus whatever your installer wants to charge you for installation as well. And those need to be placed in every room. The controller looks like this. The temperature sensor looks like this. So in my opinion, if you're looking for a third-party system, the AirTouch is the best. The other option for a third-party controller is to get an iZone or a MyZone. These are like an AirTouch. They're a little bit cheaper and they come with less features. Uh, also a Zone Touch 3. Now, the final option that I would include for a third-party option is going to be the cheapest out of everything, and that's just to get simple switches. So there are a few different options. There's Zone Switch, there's wall controllers they, they come under different names and brands but basically it's just switches they look like this you can have four or six switches and you just control the zone by pressing a button it's very easy to do it's very analog it's very manual and it comes with with fewer options but if all you really want is zone control it's actually a pretty good option in summary here's what we went over how zoning works the pros and cons of getting zoning installation requirements the costs of getting zoning and popular zone controllers that you can get I hope you found this video useful. If you have any questions about anything specific or technical, please leave them in the comments below. I'm sure other people are wondering. And if you would like to see me produce another video, please also comment that below. Thanks for watching.